Another night of CEBL basketball from the snake pit as the Saskatchewan Rattlers continue a five-game homestand and, and they reach the midway point of their season here tonight. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rattlers Tip-Off presented by IKS Live. My name is Ryan Flaherty and we have another jam-packed show for you tonight as the Saskatchewan Rattlers get set to entertain the Newfoundland Growlers, the third and final expansion team to pay a visit to Saskatoon this season. The Rattlers have won back-to-back -back games, including just on Sunday against another expansion team, the Montreal Alliance, and they are looking to make it three straight against a struggling Growlers team who has yet to find their first victory this season, coming in at 0-8. So a desperate bunch making their way to the Bridge City here tonight and the Rattlers will have to be on their best in order to get that third straight victory. Before we talk more about tonight's game, however, let's look back at that win from Sunday. It was a very solid performance by the Rattlers. Uh, it got a little bit tricky towards the end, but overall, a start to finish dominant performance by Saskatchewan in a 98-86 victory over Montreal. And uh, let's take a look. Well, before we take a look at some of the numbers from that game, actually, let's hear a couple of folks from the team just talking about that win, starting off with head coach Dean Demopoulos. You know, they, they, I thought their coach did a good job in getting them ready to play basketball. It's hard to play basketball after that kind of night, especially on the road, especially in a game with one day in between or so. So um, I thought his team did an excellent job for the circumstances. After the week off, it felt good to get back out there with the guys. Uh, we um, got Sebastian back, which was great. He gave us a great lift off the bench. And uh, it overall, it was a great game, a great step in the right direction. So a couple of things you heard there. You heard uh, mentioned about Sebastian. That's Sebastian at least. We're going to talk a little bit more about his impact a bit later in the show as he returned from a six-game absence and certainly had an impact on the outcome on Sunday. You also heard Dean Demopoulos refer to the tough circumstances that the Montreal Alliance were facing. And what he's referring to there was the fact that they had been beaten soundly just two nights prior in uh, Fraser Valley, in Langley, against the Fraser Valley Bandits. And uh, Montreal losing their sixth straight game here at the Snake Pit on Sunday. But that was a big win for the Rattlers because it moved them uh, further ahead of Montreal and Newfoundland, who are the two teams they need to stay ahead of in the race for the playoffs. Of course, the Rattlers trying to make their way up further up the standings. We'll have a look at where they sit coming up a little later in the show. But here's some numbers from that victory over Montreal. You see the score there. Rattlers had another good shooting game after a 55% performance against uh, the Edmonton Stingers. They came back with 47% from the field against Montreal and shooting at three as they have all season long, 45%. Uh, great numbers in the rebounding and assist margins. Turnovers, however, an issue. That was their season high in turnovers, and uh, the team certainly looking to clean that up moving forward. Now, the guy who was the headline maker in that win over Montreal, Devontae Bandu. He finished the night with a career high 28 points, much of that coming from beyond the arc. In fact, Bandu connected on eight of his 10 three point attempts. He is now 14 of 19 from three in his last two games. That is an absolutely insane clip, and he is really starting to find his rhythm. Here is some more about the, the impact he's had and the improvement in his game as the season's gone on. I, I think it's just finding my rhythm, you know, playing with uh, new guys. You know, last year was completely different. You know, a lot of guys were injured. Uh, you know, we just, it just wasn't there. Um, you know, nothing against last year's team, you know. Uh, it's just, you know, a lot of guys that I, want, I would like to play with got hurt. Um, it's just, you know, coaches are working with me. Uh, getting better and I'm just a big believer in that you know you keep putting the work in it'll show and it's definitely showing so you know I'm gonna keep doing that. I see Devontae put the work in day in and day out so I'm not surprised by him performing like this. I feel like we're all gelling getting to know each other getting to pick our spots a little more so I feel like uh, I'm just happy for him. Uh, his hard work is paying off and I hope he keeps it going. About four games ago three four games ago Devontae I think got an understanding of, of how he can function uh, within what we do here. Um, and he's done a, a really um, great job the last four or five games in, in trying to get to comfortable with that. Um, he played on a team last year where he, he had the light to do what he needed do when he needed to do it, which was all the time, because it wasn't a very good team. 
and he's playing with better players now, and that takes adjustment mentally and, and physically and trust-wise. And I just think he's done a, a really fine job, and I thought he, he was real good today. I thought he's got to work on, on some of his passing and decision-making, but uh, everyone does. Um, but I'm really, really pleased with, with the last four games from Devontae. I, we need it bad. He's a, he's a mainstay here. He's, he's a primary player in this program. So a bit of a longer clip there from uh, head coach Dean Dinopoulos, but I wanted to give you the full context there because he had a lot of interesting things to say about Devontae Bandu's play in the last few games and, of course, trailing back to last season. Certainly he has been hot the last couple, and the Rattlers are gonna, hoping that he can continue that going forward as they enter the second half of the season, and the playoff chase certainly heats up. All right, we're going to take our first break here on the show, and when we come back, I will have one of the Rattlers with me right here on this set, so please do stick around. You are watching Rattlers Tip-Off, presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Welcome back inside the Snake Pit. Saskatchewan Rattlers set to take on the Newfoundland Growlers tonight as the Rattlers look for their third straight win. And one of the guys who's on the mission to do that is forward Malik Ben Levy. I think you might have be the furthest away from home, aside from Sebastian, uh, right. on the team here. Savannah, Georgia, all the way to Saskatoon. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, uh, I love it out here, actually. Yeah? Yeah. What, what is it? What is it about Saskatoon that you're enjoying so much? It's kind of quiet, chill, you know, not too much, not too big of a city. I like small towns, so. Well, I had to make sure to get you on the show because, you know, we've been setting up here for the all season long, and you keep seeing the cameras, and you've been, you've been mugging for the cameras. I said, we got to get Malik on the show here. Not only that, obviously, you've been playing really well for the team as well. So I guess, first of all, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you guys have played nine games, so you're about to hit the midway point here tonight. Uh, how do you feel about the way this team has played and how it's playing, you know, in the last couple games? Well, I'm, pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Like, I know we had a couple of losses that we had in the beginning of the year, but like I said, like, I want, I want us to start peaking at the right time. I think we're doing that now. We won two in a row, trying to make it three here tonight. So we're just going to try to keep this win streak going, and we just want to get better every game. That's the biggest thing for us. How much of that is just the chemistry on the court and then the time that it takes to, to develop that and get used to guys that you're playing with? A lot of it. Like, a funny thing Coach Dean said, he wants us to marry each other. It's like, it's, it's crazy that he said it, but it's like, he wants us to be connected as one. That's his biggest thing. Like, all of us have to be as one. And once we continue to know each other, learn each other, then we only can get better. Uh, you've been playing pro ball for a few years now, uh, but your first, this is your first time in the CEBL, first time up in Canada. Just curious what your impressions uh, of Canada, impressions of the league as a whole. Oh, I love Canada, to be honest. Like, I've been here like a couple, like a month and a half now, so I, I love it a lot. And I like the CEBL a lot. It's a great challenge, it's a great league. What was it about uh, this opportunity, I guess? Uh, I guess, what brought you here or who brought you here? How did you end up uh, coming to Saskatchewan to play ball this summer? Uh, my agent called me. He was like, it's a team in Canada looking for you. And I ended up talking to Coach Massey. And then him and like one of my former coaches had a great relationship. He told me he was a great guy. So I was like, why not? And then I looked it up. I, Xavier Moon, I seen like he played in it last year. And he's in the NBA. So it's like, I'm like, man, some guys come out of there that I can play. Yeah, what has it been like? I mean, you've seen, you, you played against a Jalen Harris, uh, guys like that, guys have had stints in the NBA, uh, guys you've played against in the G League as well, and with. Um, what's that like seeing guys like that playing uh, in this league as well? What does that do for the talent level, I guess? I guess it's good for the talent level. Like, you know, every night in and night out, you're going to have a hard fought game because a lot of talent here in the CBL, and they have done a good job bringing talent here to each team. I know uh, in your career, you've had some pretty exciting moments. You've got to play in March Madness a couple of times. I'm curious, where does hitting an Elam Ender three-pointer rank in your career sort of list of like exciting moments? I would say it's like number six, number seven, okay, you know. Okay. I'm big on championships, so I want a couple championships in my life, so that's gonna be like always yeah. top of the top. But the Elam Ender, like me being able to knock that shot down was so much fun because it was like a close game 
and we really needed that shot. So me being able to knock it down, it was like, it was a lot of fun. And then, you know, my team, we celebrate a lot, so. <laughs> hey, it's like, that's what you do when you're a kid, right? You're, look, you're, you're lining up the buzzer beater, you're going for that game-winning shot, and the Elam gives you a chance to do that every game. Right, like I got a picture, I was in my mom's backyard, counting down three, two, one, and shooting, and I made one, man. It, it was a great feeling. It was a nice play. It was a sick dime from uh, Tony as well. It was a nice play all around. That was, of course, against the Niagara River Lines. Uh, Malik, you got a big game tonight against the Newfoundland team that's obviously struggling here. They haven't won a, a game yet, but they've been in some close ones against some really good teams. Is this that trap game that you have to avoid? You have to make sure you're, you're respecting this team as much as possible? Yes, you got to respect this team. You know, we come, they're coming off a tough loss against Fraser Valley where they lost by two points, but they could have easily won that game. So, I mean, you got, you got to respect every point you play. Like in the CBL, like you said, it's a lot of talent here. So, like, one day it could be they could all just put it together right now and, just, and it could be versus us. So, we just got to go out there and respect them and play as best as you can. And the guy leading the way is a guy I know you know pretty well, playing with him in Iowa in the G League and Brandon Sampson. Uh, how important will it be for you guys to contain him? Like, what does he bring to the table for fans that haven't seen him play? He's a great scorer. Like, that guy's lightning. He can shoot it. He can dunk. He athletic. Like, he got it all. He can dribble. So we got to contain him. Like, he's the engine to their team. Like, he's the leading scorer in the league. So we got to contain him in order for us to get this W. All right. Well, I know uh, last one for you here, and then just, I mentioned, you know, you're having fun. You usually have a smile on your face whenever I see you out here. You're engaging with the fans. How important is that for you to sort of keep the fun involved in, in the game? It's, it's a, it's, it's a, I would say it's the best thing for me because I feel like I play better when I'm having fun. So if I don't have the smile on my face and I feel like I start playing bad, and, you know, me interacting with the fans, stuff, it's going to bring more people out. Like, I love, seeing the, I love seeing people smile. I'm a people person. So if I can make you smile, that makes my day. Well, uh, hopefully a lot of Rattler fans will be smiling here tonight if you guys can pick up that third straight win and uh, continue moving up those standings. Malik, thanks for doing this. Uh, good luck tonight and the rest of the season. No problem. Thank you. All right. That is Malik Ben-Levy of the Saskatchewan Rattlers. He'll be in action here in uh, less than an hour's time. Tip-off at 7.30 here from the Snake Pit as the Rattlers take on the Newfoundland Growlers. All right, we're going to talk about another member of the Rattlers right now, their player to watch tonight, and we spoke about him earlier in the show. That is the Danish import, Sebastian Eris. He is taking up the international roster spot designation here for the Rattlers this season. New change in the CEBL. They've added one spot for international players for each team, and he played great the first game of the year. Then he got hurt in game two, missed six games with an ankle injury, returned to the lineup against Montreal, and came off the bench with 12 points, two rebounds, five assists in 20 minutes of action. But perhaps most noticeably, he drew four offensive fouls. And if you look at the box score from that game, Eris was a team high plus 24. For those who don't know what that means, that means that the Rattlers scored 24 points more than Montreal when Eris was on the court. That was the highest number of any member of the team. So clearly he's having a great impact and here's a couple of members of the team speaking about their Danish teammate and what he's been able to do this season. Uh, it gives us another guy who just knows how to play basketball. He makes shots, he makes the right plays, he's guarding, he's unselfish. So it just gives us another guy who fits the culture we're trying to build here. So having him back helps immensely. I, mean, I got to give this guy a round of applause for those charges. I think he had about four charges. You know, it's incredible what he does, you know, and. Um, with him, it's the small things, you know, and it, it shows, it doesn't show in the stat sheet, but it shows with us, and, you know, him coming on the court, you can see how f fluid we are, you know, he just brings a great presence on the court with us, and, um, you know, it's just him coming out, hitting that big three, I knew he, he was ready to play, you know, the injury looked great on him, uh, and looks like it's not bothering him, so it's great to have him back out there. He's a guy that has good energy and understanding of how to use that energy, and um, he's a player. You know, it's not a race to him, it's a game. And the goal of the game is to win. And uh, he can do it with the ball and without it. Um, he's one of those guys that, that plays without it a little bit better than some, of, some guys uh, do. And that's important because when he moves without it, it makes others move in sync. And you want to talk about impact. It was instant impact when Eris came off the bench for the first time in Sunday's win. The Rattlers were trailing early in that game, 17 to 9. Eris came onto the floor, hit a deep three-pointer, and that set off a 17-0 run. And the Rattlers never trailed again the rest of the way. So clearly an impact player off the bench. And uh, hopefully that ankle is feeling good after playing on it for 20 minutes in Sunday's game. He should be back out there tonight as well. 
And here's a look now at the standings as uh, we take a look at things. And there's been a bit of a change the last couple days. The Rattlers had been sitting in that seventh spot for a while, and you'll note they are up to sixth now, and that is because Scarborough suffered their fifth loss. So Rattlers with one fewer loss down in that column, that moves them up to sixth. And again, worth noting, every other team in the league, except for Newfoundland, has played more games than they have. So they have games in hand on all those five teams that they are chasing in the standings. Fraser Valley's five straight wins. They're the hottest team in the league. They're in first at eight and two. And there's Growlers here in town still seeking that first victory. All right, it is time to take another break here on the show. And when I'm back, a special guest from another sport is going to join me right here on the show. Please stick around. He's familiar to Rush fans. Oh, I just gave it away. Coming up here on Rattler's Tip-Off, presented by IKS Live. Welcome back to Sastel Center as the Saskatchewan Rattlers get set to take on the Newfoundland Growlers. First ever meeting between these two teams. Of course, Newfoundland, one of the three expansion teams in the CEBL this year. So this will be the first of three meetings this season as the Rattlers will actually travel to the Rock twice in the back half of the schedule. Uh, but first, they got to meet him right here in Saskatoon. And right now, I'm joined by someone who's played a lot, of, uh, uh, played a lot right here, but not on the basketball court. Uh, on the lacrosse field, Mark Matthews of the Saskatchewan Rush. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, you're in town doing some uh, community relations stuff with uh, with the Rush. Um, but first of all, it's a basketball game. I got to ask you some basketball questions. I, I got to think, you know, a man of your size, did you play a lot of basketball growing up? I, or? Didn't, I didn't play any. No. no. Uh, elementary school, I think I was, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if they have it anymore. The little black square beside the thing and, you know, just shoot it off the middle of the backboard and you get it hit two points and then run back and stand there again on defense. <laughs> well, the interesting thing to me is that there are a lot of similarities between lacrosse and basketball, especially just in the way the offense operates, right? Like you're talking yeah. about picks and rolls and all that kind of stuff. What are sort of the, some of the, the common bonds, I guess, between the two sports from your perspective? Our, I mean, our offense in Saskatchewan here is like, I'm pretty sure it's like generated right from the Spurs offense that they play. So it's, you know, you're, uh, you move the ball, you got your, you know, your 30 seconds or 24 seconds I have here and you know, you just gotta you know, get your feet open and get you know, call out picks and get around picks as a defenseman. And then, yeah, we just use pick and rolls and, and you know, hope for a, you know, a wide open shot instead of you know taking shots with guys around you. I was gonna say the picks are a little harder uh, set <laughs> in lacrosse, but the trade off is you guys do have a little bit of padding. These guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the uh, the stationary picking is not a thing in uh, in our league. It's uh, hit your guy as hard as you can to get yourself a little bit more space, but. Um, yeah, definitely a little more, uh, a little quicker out here with the floor being so small. Do you, do you, are you a big basketball fan? Do you get a chance to watch much? I like basketball. I don't really, uh, I wouldn't say I'm too much of a basketball fan, but if it's on, like when the Raptors were making their run there and stuff, I was watching a lot of it. So, you know, you just kind of jump on a bandwagon when you can. Were you ever, did you ever get to any Nuggets games back in, in college when you were down in Denver? I did, yeah. I went to a ton of them, actually, when uh, a buddy of mine was dating a cheerleader there. So we were... <laughs> We were often going to uh, you know, get pretty good seats. So. <laughs> Had the connection right yep. here. Uh, all right, uh, real quick before I talk, a little bit of rush with you. I saw you were out on a bit of a fishing trip uh, recently. I'm curious where that was and how many fish did you catch? I think I saw Robert Church on that boat too. Yeah, I was out. Uh, I've been on the road for like a week and a half or feels like two months. But uh, I was out in Vancouver for uh, Churchy's uh, engagement party. So yeah, we did that on Friday, and then uh, a buddy of mine's got a boat in uh, in Port Moody there, where uh, kind of where Robert lives. So yeah, we went out for the day and got into a couple Chinook, and just kind of did some uh, did some drinking and some hanging out in the sun, and that was a fun day. There you go. At least you didn't catch a sunburn. That's important huh. always when you're out in the boat. Oh, right? I, I've cut my shirt's covering it. <laughs> There you go. Uh, real quick, just a couple questions about the rush. Obviously, you're coming off a, a season that was a tough one for you guys. Uncharacteristic uh, season, no playoffs. 
Uh, you had a coaching change before the season, another one in the, in the middle of the season. But you know, you had a, a, a good finish to that to that year. Uh, how are you feeling about you know things moving into next season? I feel great. I mean, it obviously it sucked for Bubs being you know as great a coach as he is, and we just didn't perform for him or under him, and um, you know having him depart with about five or six weeks or whatever it was in the year and then Jimmy coming in and kind of taking the reins and he's just a you know he's a teacher at heart and a teacher profession so it's kind of you know he's one of those guys that you kind of just listen to when they speak and you know we're just we're thrilled to have him kind of you know guide the ship now and hopefully uh, you know next year get off to a little bit better start and you know, kind of keep things rolling. And another team entering the pool too. You guys got Vegas now coming in next year. I'm sure that's a, the trip that's going to be circled on, on the schedule. A yeah, bit. we were actually talking about that this weekend about <laughs> a bunch of the guys, uh, you know, girlfriends and wives and stuff going out for the weekend. And, you know, as soon as that schedule comes out, seeing, you know, when, uh, you know, your friends and your family want to go to a game that they haven't came in my 12-year career, but now that Vegas is here, they want to come for a game. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to play out there, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, they'll have a good... Uh, a good production and, and all that kind of stuff like they do in hockey. Well, uh, I know there's uh, obviously a lot of offseason left here and there's still probably, there's an expansion draft coming up. There's going to be some, probably some new faces in town uh, come next season, but it sounds like you guys are going to have a lot of the same core back as well. So uh, just wanted to wish you luck uh, the rest of the offseason and going into 2023. And thanks for being here, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. we're, uh, we're excited. Yeah, that is Mark Matthews, uh, the mailman, <laughs> Saskatchewan Rush Forward and uh, National Lacrosse League MVP as well. Mark, thanks a lot for being here, man. Enjoy the game. Thank you. All right, moving right along back to a little basketball, but hey, we always got to take advantage when we get guys like Mark Matthews in town, so glad to have him join us here on the show. Uh, let's take a look at a player to watch for Newfoundland tonight, and uh, that is the guy, we talked about him with Malik Ben-Levy, that is Brandon Sampson, and uh, he is in his first year here in the CDBL, and right now he is leading the league in scoring, averaging 22.6 points per game, shooting 53% from the field, a native of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Played at LSU, now in his fifth year as a pro and a dangerous, dangerous player. In fact, earlier this season, he set a new CEBL record for scoring in one game with a 42-point outburst in a loss to the Ottawa Blackjacks. A heartbreaking loss that was actually only by a single point. But Brandon Sampson going to be key for the Rattlers' defense tonight. They're going to have to be aware of him at all times. And that leads us right into our uh, first look at some potential award winners at the end of the season. We're halfway through the year or just about, so why not look at some MVP candidates? Of course, here in the CBL, it's the Player of the Year Award. Not most valuable player, it's a little bit different. It's about that straight up performance and Sampson certainly a candidate at midseason with the numbers he's put up to scoring. He's also one of the top thieves in the league at 1.8 steals per game. Look at some other good candidates as well, including the Rattler Zone, Tony Carr. He is the only player in the CEBL who's in the top 12 in points, rebounds, and assists. So an all-around game that's been very impressive, and he's been leading the way for the Rattlers. Cat Barber, Khalil Ahmad, we've seen Ahmad here on this court. He had a great game here for Niagara in a losing effort earlier this season. And Jalen Harris has been to Saskatoon as well. He's done plenty of scoring as well. So those are just a handful of potential candidates for the new player of the year because Xavier Moon, who won the award all three of the first three seasons in the CBL, well, he's moved on to the NBA. So there will be a new player of the year at the end of this season. All right, time to take our final break and then we will be back with one more guest. We'll chop it up and talk about tonight's matchup coming up after this quick break. You're watching Rattlers Tip Off presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca.
Welcome back. Swish is dancing around in the background and getting the fans going here early on here inside the snake pit as the Saskatchewan Rattlers get set to entertain the Newfoundland Growlers in the first of a three-game season series. And this is that continuing that stretch of the schedule that the Rattlers on paper should be able to take advantage of. They started off with a win over Montreal on Sunday. And in fact, they already won against Edmonton eight days prior to that. And there is there's Swish making a cameo appearance. And, uh, of course, Rattlers trying for third win in a row here tonight against the Growlers. All right, pleased to be joined by a uh, oh, good friend, former colleague, uh, Global Saskatoon's Brendan Purdy. Thanks for being here, man. Plus, thank you so much for having me. Great night of basketball ahead. Oh, man, it's fantastic. Uh, the Rattlers are on their first winning streak of the season, so let's uh, just start there. Uh, you know, nine games in, what are your impressions of this team and, and, and I guess, their potential? My gosh, Flats, uh, night and day from the last two seasons that, of uh, CEBL Rattlers basketball that we've seen. Uh, in 20 games over the previous two seasons, we saw two wins. We got that within the first three games this season. And during this home stretch, the team has really elevated their play and doing some of those small things that we've talked with head coach Demopoulos about throughout the season, buying in and having that consistent effort night in and night out. And we've really seen it over this streak that they've started to build. All right, uh, you obviously cover the team. You're one of uh, the members of the Global Saskatoon Sports Department here. Uh, you know, every year there's new personalities, new players come in. Uh, you get a chance to talk to them, uh, you know, away from the court a little bit at practice. That's the thing. You know, you guys are doing a great job with this uh, Hoops History uh, segment that you guys have, and fans get to see that here in the building as well. Um, you know, is there one or two players that are kind of really caught your eye, I guess, this season? I would say the biggest one is getting to know him last year is Devontae Bandu, and he was relied upon so much on this team uh, to be the anchor and score so many points last year, and this year, they've been able to divvy the ball around, and just to see his excitement on the floor, uh, we mentioned before we got on here, uh, his interaction with the fans against Montreal, getting amped up and getting into it with the crowd, which has been really cool for me to see. Yeah, it's always fun when the fans are, or, and the players and the fans kind of get engaged. It seems to be a lot of that. A lot of guys on this team seem to really enjoy that. I was just talking to Malik Ben Levy a few minutes ago. That's super big thing for him as well. And of course, that just gets more butts in the seats, right? Uh, speaking of those fans, I mean, you know, it's summertime. There's a lot of things people like to do in the summer, and sometimes it can be a challenge uh, to, to convince them to come spend some time indoors when it's nice outside. But just sort of what sort of buzz are you getting a sense of about this team? And have you heard maybe? A, have you heard that building, I guess, as the season goes? I would say definitely. And you know what? In Saskatoon, with all the sports teams that we cover here, it's winning will build that excitement. And as the team has had more success, that buzz, the palpable buzz around the city has certainly been apparent. And one thing that talking to the coach and some of the players throughout this year is they're a small crowd, but they're a mighty crowd. The Snake Pit has been rocking so far this season and has been a huge advantage for this team, as we've seen over the homestand. Yeah. Uh You've been covering this this league since day one, as I have been around it as well, um, and we've seen a lot of growth. And I've talked to players, I've talked to coaches. From your perspective, you know what's the biggest uh, difference, I guess, this year compared to year one. Um, I mean, year one, there was a lot of buzz around the fact that they were hosting championship weekend, and obviously the Rattlers inevitably did win the inaugural title. Uh, over the last couple of years, with the way things have gone, coming into this season and seeing the way that the team has been able to produce, especially here at home, owning that 3-1 and one record, and just the way, as I alluded to earlier, that sharing the ball, uh, minus that loss to Scarborough, every one of the wins here during the streak at least five players minimum in those games have reached double digits in points. So they have been sharing the rock, which is kind of ironic when you see that the Rattlers are, have the lowest assist yeah. per game this season, although Tony Carr is currently second in the league yeah. in dimes per game. Yeah, they make the most of the ones that they get. And they are coming off a season high in assists in the last game had, uh, uh, I believe it was 20 uh, dimes in that win over Montreal. Hey, Herds, you want to stick around? We're going to talk tonight's matchup at Keys of the Game if you want to Sounds great. All right, great. Uh, let's look at the tonight's matchup and some numbers between these two teams. And of course, this is the first ever meeting between the Rattlers and Growlers. So the head-to-head -head wins, well, they're dead even at zeros. But that will be updated as the season goes on. The record's obviously quite a discrepancy there. But take a look at the points, uh, both in terms of scoring and defense. They're actually quite similar. Uh, and that record for Newfoundland is a bit deceiving because out of those eight losses, four are by four points or less, including two one-point losses. And two of those 
very close games or in their last two against the top two teams in the league in Hamilton and Fraser Valley. So you know that 0-8 record may be a bit deceiving for Newfoundland, eh, Perds? Oh, definitely, Flats. And I know that you hate that old cliche, but I have to go there. This is that trap game. Mm. An 0 and 8 team, you cannot get stuck looking at their record when you, as you just mentioned, how they've played in their last couple of games out onto the court. And when you're sitting at 0 and 8, that's what you want. You want some team to try and play down to you, and then you surprise them. And, you know, Brandon Sampson obviously leading the way, uh, but he's had some help in a couple of ex-rattlers, Terry Thomas, who joined the fold late, and also Shaquille Keith, but I'm told, I don't have this confirmed, have heard that Shaquille Keith may not be playing tonight, so that would be a bonus for the Rattlers as well. It would certainly be a bonus for the Rattlers, but not for their faithful here at the Snake Pit. As we all know, anybody who covered the team back in 2019, Shaq Keith is must-see TV. He is electric when he's hitting shots. He gets engaged with the fans, both his home fans and the visiting fans. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's look at the keys to the game as we go through here and just come close to the end of the show. Starting off with uh, something we just talked about. The Rattlers have to ignore the record. Throw it out the window, treat it like it's the season opener, you're both fresh, and it's not an 0 8 team you're facing here. That's clear, we just discussed that, we don't need to belabor that point any further. Second key, take care of the ball. The Rattlers had a lot of good things in their win over Montreal, but they also had a season high 18 turnovers, something that Dean Demopoulos was not happy about and spoke at length about after the game, so you know that'll be a point of emphasis for them going forward. And final key to the game, we've talked about him as well, contain Samson. I don't know if you can cut off his hair, maybe take away his power, that's a different Samson, but who knows? If the Rattlers are in tough in the second half, they might be looking for any possible solution. We'll see how things go tonight. Uh, and yeah, what do, you, what do you think? What are you expecting from this game here tonight? So, Flats, the one thing that has been consistent over this home stand is your big players need to be at their best. Over this home stretch, their top three players, when you have Carr, you have Bandu, and you have Lindsay, they're all averaging north of 18.5 points per game. So if your big players are your big players, the rest will take care of itself. Last night, or pardon me, against Montreal, you see Sebastian Aris coming off the bench, making a big impact. I believe you mentioned him earlier in tonight's show. Uh, and so if you can have the supporting cast going as well as the big dogs, that will be a key for the Rattlers tonight. All right, well, it should be a good one. And we are just about half an hour away from tip-off. And uh, that will pretty much do it for this show. Thanks a lot, Brendan, for being here. I Thanks, Lance. I calling you Brendan. I call you Purge all the time, so stick with that. And uh, appreciate Mark Matthews and Malik ben Levy joining me as well. And don't forget... You can find out everything that's going on in the Snake Pit and around the CEBL by following the Saskatchewan Rattlers on social media. And I think you may see tomorrow a couple of clips from this year's show maybe showing up on those feeds as well. So if you missed anything, you can catch it there. Or, you can, of course, you can watch this on demand on the Rattlers YouTube page as well. Our next edition of Rattlers Tip-Off will come your way on Friday, Canada Day, as the team wraps up this five-game homestand against the team they opened the season against the Niagara River Lions, who they've already beaten twice this year, and the Lions will be trying to get a measure of payback. And note the start time, it's a half hour earlier than normal, a 7 o'clock tip-off, so we will come your way at 6 o'clock right here from our courtside location. That does it for this edition of Rattlers Tip-Off. Thanks so much for watching. Get settled in for a good one. Should be a lot of fun. Enjoy the game, everyone. This has been Rattlers Tip-Off, presented by IKS Live. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Smoky in the air, that's a lot of